In an experiment, a group of children each repeatedly throw a dart at a target. For each child, the random variable h represents the number of times the dart hits the target in the first 10 throws. Peter models h as binomially distributed where n is 10 and p is 0.1. Part a asks, state two assumptions that Peter needs to make to use her model. So first of all, we know that this is a binomial distribution uh, and the way we know this is because of this b um, here. So this tells us this is a binomial distribution uh, and that's the first thing we need to look out for. So now we know this, we know that there are a set of assumptions that come from modelling with a binomial distribution, um, things that we have to assume for it to work. Uh, for example, one of these in a general, as a general statement, is that there has to be a fixed probability of success, um, which is p. And um, we've said before that p is 0 0.1. So this has to be fixed. Now, in the context of the question, uh, what this would mean is that the the probability of a dart hitting a target, because that's what we now define as success in this context, the probability of a dart hitting a target has to be fixed. This must be constant, um, regardless of, you know, which child it is or which number of throws it is. Uh, and now a second assumption that we have to make is that, in general, uh, that trials have to be independent. Uh, and again, in the context of this question, um, we define a trial as the number of throws um, because we said the number of trials, uh, which we call n, is 10 and we know that there are 10 throws. So each throw is a trial. Um, and we have to assume that these are all independent. So if you were to hit the target in your first throw, that doesn't affect your chances of hitting it uh, in one of your other throws is what we mean by independent. Uh, and so we have to assume that each throw doesn't affect the other. Um, so that can be our second reason. So now we've given two reasons, uh, as we were asked for, uh, and this will get us both of our marks. Um, we get a mark for each point, um, but the mark scheme is quite specific with this. Um, there are specific words we need to use. Um, so for the first bullet point uh, about the probability being constant, we must use the words probability or any equivalent words such as chance, possibility, um, and we have to use the word constant or fixed or the same, a word implying constant. Um, we need to use both of those words to be able to get the first mark. So they're quite specific about this. Uh, and similarly, for our second mark, uh, the second point about throws being independent, we need to use the word throws. Um, they don't accept the word trials, um, suggesting that they, they need the answer to be in the context of the question. Um, and not just a general assumption we make for binomial distribution, which is why they need the word throws. Uh, and we have to use the word independent as well. But this will get us our second mark. Part B is now asking us to use Peter's model and find the probability of H being greater than or equal to 4. So there are different ways we can solve this, and it does actually depend on the type of calculator you have. So some calculators are able to, so using this distribution, where h is binomial when n is 10 and p is 0 0.1. Some calculators are able to find the probability of h being greater than or equal to 4, just using that. Um, and that's, that's for calculators that in their binomial distribution option, um, you can put in a lower and an upper bound, um, where you'd put the lower bound as 4 uh, and the upper bound as 10, uh, and then n is 10 and p is 0 0.1, and you'll get the answer. But that's not most calculators. Most calculators don't have that option. And we actually need to rewrite this uh, in a way that they can solve, which is when we have h, in this case, is less than or equal to something. Um, they can't calculate things when it's greater than or equal to. It has to be less than or equal to. And so if we were to write, rewrite this uh, as something to do with the probability of h being less than or equal to something, um, we can actually write it as 1, because this is the biggest probability that we can get. Uh, 1, take away the probability of h being less than or equal to 3, um, because that would give us the probability of h being greater than or equal to 4, um, because this probability of h being less than or equal to 3 kind of excludes all probabilities lower than h is greater than or equal to 4. Uh, so now we have something uh, in this form. Many calculators now with a binomial distribution option uh, can calculate this. 
so if we were to put this in our calculator, uh, we'd find that the probability of h being less than or equal to 3 is 0 0.98872, which we can then do this calculation to find is equal to 0 0.0128, and this is all to four decimal places. Uh, and this is our answer. However, there's actually one more way we can do this if we don't have a calculator uh, that can do a question like this, um, or it's just an alternative method. Uh, and that is using the binomial distribution uh, tables that you can read values off of. Uh, and if you were to look at one of these tables, which are often in formula booklets, uh, if this was an exam, um, if we look at when n is 10, p is 0 0.1, x, which is this value here, it's normally called x, uh, is 3. Uh, and then if we read uh, that off of a table, we'll find this value here. 0 0.9872 uh, and then we can do this calculation one take away that uh, to get our answer and so we conclude that therefore the probability of h being greater than or equal to 4 is equal to 0 0.0128 to four decimal places uh, and now this will get us the one mark uh, and the mark is awarded for finding that the probability is equal to 0 0.0128 which we've found here. For each child, the random variable f represents the number of the throw on which the dart first hits the target. Using Peter's assumptions about this experiment, part c asks us to find the probability that f is equal to 5. So what this question is essentially asking us um, is it's asking us to find the probability that the child first hits the target on their fifth throw. And what this therefore implies is that on the child's first, second, third and fourth throw, they miss. And then finally on the fifth throw, they hit the target. And so another thing we can say is the fact that the probability that the dart hits the target is 0 0.1, uh, as we were told up here. If that probability is 0 0.1, then the probability of missing must be 0 0.9, because one takeaway 0 0.1 is 0 0.9. So if the probability of missing is 0 0.9 and at first the child misses um, four times, we can say that the probability that they first hit the um, target on their fifth throw is equal to the fact that they miss four times before finally hitting the target. Uh, and in terms of probability, we can write that as 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 times 0 0.9, which is 0 0.9 to the power of 4. Um, and that's the first four times where the child misses the target. So that's the probability of that as we just multiply each probability with each other. And then finally, on their fifth row, they hit the target and the probability of that happening is 0 0.1. So we multiply this by 0 0.1. Uh, and then we find that to four decimal places, this is equal to 0 0.0656. And this is the probability that the child first hits the target on their fifth row. Now, this question is worth two marks. Uh, and the first mark of this question comes from finding that the equation for this probability is 0 0.9 to the power of 4 times by 0 0.1. So this gets us our first method mark. Uh, and then lastly, we get an answer mark for finding that this probability is equal to 0 0.0656. Thomas assumes that in this experiment, no child will need more than 10 throws for the dart to hit the target for the first time. He models the probability that f is equal to n as equal to 0 0.01 plus n minus one times by alpha, where alpha is a constant. Part D is now asking us to find the value of alpha. So the first thing we want to do with this question is think about any way we could kind of set out this information in a bit of an easier to manage way. And one way we can do this is with a table. Um, so if we draw out a table that shows all the different values of n and therefore the probability that f is equal to n, um, it might be a bit easier to see where this is going. So if we start out and we don't need to draw out a table for every single value of n. If we just do 1, 2, and then 10, um, 
this should be enough. So when n is equal to 1, we have 0 0.01 plus 1 minus 1, which is 0. So this is just the probability that f is equal to n is just 0 0.01. Now, when n is 2, we have 0 0.01 plus 2 minus 1, which is 1, times alpha. So we're left with 0 0.01 plus alpha. And now we'll, we'll have a pattern that just follows all of this and there's no point really writing out all of them. So if we just put some ellipses to show the, the rest of the numbers. Uh, and then when n is 10, which is the biggest number that n can be, because uh, Thomas assumed that the child will need no more than 10 throws. So 10 is the maximum value n can be. We have 0 0.01 again, plus 10 take away 1, which is 9 times by alpha. So we have 0 0.01 plus 9 alpha. And so this is our table here. And now we can see that all the values here, and including all of these ones here, all the way up to n, should be equal, when added together, should be equal to 1, because all probabilities should add up to 1 of the same kind of model. And so 0 0.01 plus 0 0.01 plus alpha plus etc plus this should be equal to 1. And so we can see that this forms a series, almost an arithmetic series. Uh, and so if we could find the sum of this series, we would know that it must be equal to 1. So the general equation for the sum of the, of the first n terms of a series um, is that n over 2 multiplied by 2a plus n minus 1d is the sum, where n is these numbers up here, uh, the nth term, a is the first um, value in the series, uh, and d is the difference between each one. So if we put this into context of ours, we want the sum of the first 10 terms, where n is 10. So we want 10 over 2 multiplied by 2a, and a, the first term, is 0 0.01, because that's what we have here. And then, again, n is 10, so n minus 1 is 9. Uh, and d is alpha, because we can see that each time, we and we'd see this if we worked out all of these as well, each time we add an alpha um, to the probability. So the difference between each one is alpha. So this is our equation, which we can more simply write as 5 multiplied by 0 0.02 plus 9 alpha. Uh, and as we said before, this must be equal, therefore, to 1, because all of these add up to 1, and this is just an equation to show how we can add all of these up. Now, if we simplify this out, a little bit further, we're left with 0 0.1 plus 45 alpha is equal to 1. So if we take away 0 0.1 from both sides, we have 45 alpha is equal to 0 0.9. And then if we divide both sides by 45, we're left with our final answer, which is that alpha is equal to 0 0.02. Now, this question has four marks available. Uh, and our first mark is a method mark, and it actually comes from drawing out this table. So kind of presenting this information uh, in this table format gets us our first method mark and kind of showing the distribution of f. Uh, now, secondly, we get two marks for finding the sum of the probability um, is equal to one. Uh, and the reason for this is we get a method mark just for kind of attempting to do it um, and then we get an answer mark for doing it correctly. So doing all of this is equal to two marks, a method mark and an answer mark. And finally, we get our last mark uh, as an answer mark, and that's just for finding that alpha is therefore equal to 0 0.02. For part E, we're now asked to use Thomas's model and find the probability that f is equal to five. So all we need to do for this question is in this formula up here, we just need to replace n with 5 because we're finding out what happens when the child hits the target on their fifth row when n is 5. So all we need to write is that the probability that f is equal to 5 is equal to 0 0.01 plus n minus 1 where n is 5. So 5 take away 1 is 4 so it's plus 4 uh, and then we found out in part d that alpha 
is equal to 0 0.02. So we can replace alpha with 0 0.02. And if we put this into the calculator, we find that therefore the probability that f is equal to 5 is 0 0.09. Now, the one mark for this question uh, is an answer mark. It comes from just stating that therefore the probability is uh, 0 0.09. Part F is now asking us to explain how Peter and Thomas's models differ in describing the probability that a dart hits the target in this experiment. So if we think back to part A, uh, we stated that one of the assumptions that we needed to make for Peter's model um, is that the probability of hitting a target was constant because she used binomial distribution uh, and that's just an assumption we have to make. So in Peter's model, the probability that a dart hits the target was constant. However, if we now look at Thomas's model, which we have in front of us here, we can see that as n increases, the probability that a dart hits the target also increases. Um, because if this value here increases, then so does the overall probability. And so this is the difference. Peter's model assumes that the probability uh, of a dart hitting the target uh, remains constant. Uh, however, Thomas's model assumes that the probability of hitting a, a target increases with each throw, with each attempt. Now, this question is worth one mark, uh, and the one mark comes from stating all of this. Uh, the mark scheme is quite um, specific in what words they want you to use. Um, so using the fact that the probability is constant for Peter's model, those two words, probability and constant, are underlined in the mark scheme. They're quite important. Um, that we say that the probability is constant, uh, and then that Thomas's model assumed that the probability increases um, was another key statement needed. Uh, but if you have all of that, we get the one mark available for the question.